Hello everybody, this is Zax399, another brand new game that just came out on Steam. Uh, today, this one's called Buried. This is an interactive story where it looks like you get to make choices of your own. Something about you're a logger in a forest and uh, you wake up from being unconscious and nobody's around and you don't know what the heck's going on, so you're trying to solve the mystery of what happened. So... This game is only $2.99 on Steam. There is no discount its first week. That is an American currency. And uh, it just launched. So I usually like these kind of uh, interactive virtual novels. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this and see uh, you know, what the first chapter is like anyway. Uh, hopefully I'll live uh, through that first chapter. But we'll find out what this story is about. And if I like this game. And if you like this game. Right after this. All right, welcome back, everybody. And so the opening page here says, Buried is an interactive story. The plot will change based on the choices you make. The story is broken into five chapters. Play straight through or at your own pace. There's no waiting and no pauses. Enjoy and choose wisely. Begin. All right, let's get this show started. Oh, I kind of like that. Kind of shows you a picture of where you're at and what's going on. You don't have to imagine everything. I open my eyes, and the first thing I want to do is scream. I'm flat on my back, and everything seems to hurt. The trees overhead look familiar. It's a clear night sky, almost beautiful. Except for the fact that this means I've been out cold for at least six hours. But there's something wrong. I don't remember what but something happened and my head, my god, my head hurts and a ringing in my ears. Was there an accident? An explosion, I think. I remember Dennis screaming, but after that, I can't remember. As I sit up, I notice that my hard hat has been thrown off. I look around the area, but it's not here. It feels strange to go anywhere without my hard hat but I've got to find the other members of the crew. They could be in danger. So, wow, I like that it already gives us a choice just a couple of minutes into the game. Uh, I play uh, a few of these virtual novels and usually you don't get a choice that quick. That's kind of cool. So search for the hard hat or search, forget the hat and search for the crew. Well, I'm not going to be logging anymore. You know, trees aren't going to be falling anymore, I don't think. Uh... I don't know if I need to search for my hard hat. Kind of seems like the crew would be more important. But something inside of me tells me that this is almost a trick. I, you know, I think most people are probably going to search for the crew and forget the hard hat. But something tells me this hard hat of mine might be important. So, yeah, something's kind of pulling me to search for the hard hat. So that's the direction I'm going to go, just based on my gut instinct here. So we're going to go ahead and search for my hard hat. Now, this is the first time I've played this game. I haven't played this game at all. So also keep in mind that if you guys are watching this and you're like, man, why didn't you choose the other choice? Or why didn't you choose this? You know, uh, I, I encourage you to click the link down below. Go buy this game and uh, support the developer. It's only $2.99. So, you know, very affordable, uh, you know, virtual game that you get to actually kind of control where it goes by making your own choices. So that link is right down below. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and continue this and search for the hard hat. I get up on shaky legs and look around for a moment. A few nearby trees look to have been splintered and broken at the base recently. They certainly weren't like this earlier. Searching for the hard hat feels normal. It makes me feel like maybe there isn't something wrong here. I see it behind a fallen log about 10 feet away from me. How it was thrown so far is beyond me. Driven by nothing more than habit, I walk over to it, pick it up, and place it on my head. Next, I walk over to the center of the logging site and don't like what I see. Uh-oh. I kind of sense the, uh, the background noise is kind of creepy as well. Oh, wow. Dang something weird happened look at that picture 
The logging site looks like a bomb was detonated right in the center. I don't know where to start. The one load we had managed to stack on a truck for the day is overturned, the trailer bent, and the logs hanging off the back. Where the hell is everyone? My head is killing me, and this ringing in my ears, I can't hear anything. Not birds, not my footsteps, nothing. It makes me wonder if I hit my head after my hard hat flew off. I run through a quick mental checklist to make sure my brain is still working. Well, my name is Roger Hastings, I'm 41 years old, and the year is 2017. I own a small logging company, and we've been logging in this strip of Kentucky woodland for almost a month now. Okay, so my brain works, that's a relief, but it also makes me fearful, because something is certainly not right. I look around the logging site, my mind trying to figure out what has happened. Just about every piece of equipment has been overturned or tilted. Look at the debris or look at the truck. Uh, let's look at the truck and see if maybe we can figure out what the heck happened. The truck, the hitch is completely broken, like it was blown off in an explosion, a really bad accident. Had there been an explosion, all of the fuel on site would have started a fire, but there's no charring, no burning, nothing. I walk through the area where Dennis had been working. From the looks of it, he'd been moving slowly. He'd only taken down four trees today. His metal lunchbox is open, an indicator that he had been taking an early break. But he's not here. No one is here. Where the hell is everyone? I could try to make a call on my cell phone, but its battery is already running really low. Not that it matters. The reception is crap out here. Yell out or call someone on the cell phone. Wow. Uh, if the cell phone reception is crap out here, then, well, it's worth a try. I mean, what's the worst that could happen by calling? Let's call and see if we can get somebody. Why not? Call someone in the cell. I pull out my cell and try to make a call to Frank. It rings and rings, and then just goes to his voicemail. But before I can leave a message, my phone goes dead. Great. I hope I don't need my phone anytime soon. Might as well start walking. The highway is almost a mile back through the woods down the gravel road we used to reach the site. Maybe the crew ran that way for help. But why would they have left me? Were they scared? Out of sorts? Maybe I can catch up to them. But with my truck turned over on its side, it looks like I'll be walking. My god, I can't even remember what I was doing before waking up on my back. Wait, what's that? Underneath a bulldozer. Oh my god, it's a leg. It has to be either Tony or Dennis. The dozer looks unstable, like it might roll some more. It might not be safe to get close, but at the same time, I can't just leave him there. Well, I assume that I put my hard hat on and if something happens, maybe that would protect my head anyway. And I'm probably not a whole lot. If a truck rolls down the hill on me, a hard hat's not going to help me a whole lot. But I can't just leave. I got to see who it is anyway. I mean, let's go look. Hey, I yell, are you okay? Are you alive? Holding onto my hat, I skip over the wrecked equipment and stray logs to get closer. I can see a bit more of the leg. The jeans are soaked in blood. I recognize the work boots. It's clearly Tony. His leg is bent at an impossible angle. Nearly crushed flat. Oh my god, that, uh, that would hurt. The closer I get, the more apparent it becomes that Tony didn't survive. Leave the body alone or pull the body out? Pull the body out? I'm kind of scared that truck might... Well, it's on its side already. Let's pull the body out. I don't know why. It's kind of, kind of uh, grisly, probably. But yeah, let's let's pull it out. I'm curious, maybe we can figure out what the heck happened. I try to pull him out, 
but he's just not budging. That's when I see the blood coating the ground under him. It's thick and fresh, so dark on the dirt that it looks black. As I'm tugging, I hear something crunch, but I somehow manage to pull him out. His legs are absolutely crushed, and his stomach looks deflated. Blood is covering everything from the navel down. His face was turned to the right when he was crushed. It looks like a broken plastic mask, seeping with blood and bits of sh oh man, bits of shattered skull. My God, I can't believe this. I have to turn away. That's when I hear a deafening creaking noise, and I'm bashed in the head from behind as the bulldozer shifts lower to the ground. I was kind of worried about that. I roll clear and end up on my back, my eyes struggling to focus. I'm a little shaken up, but I'm fine. Thank God I was wearing my hard hat. I quickly get up and dust myself off. Now, good thing I got that hard hat. I, I knew there was a, you know something telling me I needed to get it. I can't stay here. I have to find Dennis, Frank, and Joe. I have to find out what happened here. Wow, this is pretty good, huh? Starts off, uh, starts off with a bang for sure. A lot of logs. As I walk through the stacks of logs from the last week or so of work, everything feels frozen. This high-pitched sound in my ears, it's terrible. It keeps happening every few seconds and sounds like it's coming from far away. I can't help but wonder, is it my ears or is it something else? The silence out here is creepy and there's a smell like the atmosphere after a bad summer storm. I might as well admit it, I'm a little scared. Everyone is missing and it's dead quiet out here. Dead quiet except for the ringing, huh? There doesn't even seem to be a breeze to rustle the leaves and branches. My right knee hurts like hell. My head was hurting so bad before that I never even noticed the pain in my knee. I must have heard it during the, uh, well, during the what? Accident or... Wait, is that Dennis? I see him sitting on the ground, motionless, about 30 feet away. Yell out or walk up. Now, I don't think this is a zombie game, but since I don't know what the hell's going on here, I mean, I'm not just going to walk up and have who I think is Dennis smack me in the face with a shovel or something or bite me or whatever. I'm going to yell out first. I'm not taking any chances. Dennis, I yell. Dennis, can you hear me? Dennis lets out a shout, like someone waking from a nightmare. Then he looks back at me from the ground. Yeah, Roger, I hear you, he hollers back as I head over to him. Dennis is built like a wrestler and has the tough personality to match, but in this moment he looks disoriented and even a little anxious. Though I'm glad to see him, the fear on his usually confident face is alarming. What the hell happened? What's going on? he asks. An explosion, I think, or I don't know, the crew is missing. Well, I don't know for certain that an explosion happened. I mean, I'm still trying to figure everything out, so I do know that the crew's missing, except for him and, well, uh, Tony, who we found dead. But I think I'm just going to go with the crew's missing. Just because I don't know for sure that's what's happened. Missing, Dennis says. Where do you think they went? I'm not sure, I say, but it has me pretty freaked out. Something's not right here. Still sitting on the ground, he looks around the woods, as if he is just now understanding the severity of the situation. The equipment was overturned, the dozers too, I say, shifting my hard hat and wiping my forehead. Are you okay? I ask him. Yeah, just shaking up. Me too. This might be the most intimate conversation Dennis and I have ever had. While he and I have always been on good terms, we've never been particularly close. I've always respected him though. Sure, he's come to work a few times looking like he'd been in a bar fight the night before, but I've also seen him do an enthusiastic impression of a dinosaur 
as he played with Tony's kids while they waited for their dad to finish up his shift. It's then that it hits me. Dennis and Tony were good friends. Oh, hell. I'm not sure I want to rattle him with the news of Tony's death right now. Not before we know what's going on. But then again, he has a right to know. Uh... He seems like he's pretty shaken up. I don't know that I should tell him, but... Then again, the last thing, if I don't mention him, if I don't mention Tony, sure as hell he's going to see him or something and, and not trust me or something. So I think I'm just going to be honest and blunt. I mean, the situation's already bad. You know, we might as well tell him the truth. He's a friend, right? We respect him, so if we respect him, I think we're going to tell him what's up. Tony's dead. You were up front with Dennis about Tony. So that's a saved choice. Dennis's eyes fixate on me, startled. He, he was crushed under the dozer, I say. Dennis pauses for a moment, like he is trying to understand what I said. His eyes narrow, and his bottom lip quivers. Oh, that's sad. He's going to cry, or trying to hold back a tear. Shit, he says. And I can tell that he is fighting back tears, yep. He and Tony had been tight, almost like brothers. Hey, he adds quickly, as if trying to escape the reality of Tony's death. Did you see that light? No, I say. What did you see? I don't even know, Roger, he says. It was like this flare of white light. It came right up out of the ground, like an explosion. So, there was an explosion, I say. Maybe it was some equipment, or... <laughs> this was no equipment. Dennis interrupts, agitated. This huge ball of light came right out of the damn ground. Um, should I say where did it go or what did it look like? I'm going to say what did it look like. Where did it go? That's a weird question to ask. Like looking into the sun, he says. It just feels like someone stabbing the eyes with a hot knife. When? I'm not sure, he answers. But I had finished up about ten trees for the day and was about to top one. That's when it happened. You were almost done with ten trees, I ask? Yeah, he says, looking at the ground. You know, I wouldn't want to take a lunch break until I was done. And that's when the light blew up. Why? You don't believe me? Uh, no, I believe you. I believe you, Dennis. Why wouldn't I? You believe Dennis's story. He saw what he saw, I think to myself. He has no reason to lie about this. My God, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, he says. But if I'm being honest, it scared me pretty bad. And if it's all the same to you, I'd like to get the hell out of here. We both stand up and start heading towards the road. It isn't until we start moving that I see Dennis is wounded. His right side is coated in blood, the red seeping through his blue work shirt. Oh no. There are splatters of it here and there, but also a very large red splotch that makes me worry. Do I ask him if he's in a lot of pain, or how did you get that injury? No, I'm going to be blunt again. I'm going to ask him exactly how he got that injury. I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I'm not sure, Dennis replies. I must have gotten thrown or hurt somehow from that light. It's then that I notice the strange ringing noise is still filling the air. Hey, I say, stopping. Do you hear that high-pitched ringing noise every once in a while? Dennis looks scared when I ask him this question, and he just nods. I thought it was just me, he says. He looks out of sorts and uncertain. I've never seen him like this before. It's obvious that he's looking for some reassurance. Even though I'm his boss, there's something very unnerving about this. Should I say we'll be okay? It's probably nothing. Or should I say it's freaking me out? No, I mean, I'm his boss. I'm his friend. Well, I'm not his friend, like Tony was his friend, but I'm... You know, I respect him, so, uh, I don't want to freak him out more by saying I'm freaking out. I, I gotta be, 
you know, I gotta man up here and try to reassure him a little bit. So I think I'm gonna say we'll, we'll be okay. It's probably nothing. Kinda look on the bright side. Let's be realistic, I tell myself. I might as well try to be empathetic. Out here in the middle of these woods, the ringing could be anything. Maybe a car alarm from through the woods or something? Still, even my passive comment seems to have reassured Dennis. He looks a bit calmer and more relaxed. We both start moving forward and don't say another word. Did you try to call Frank? Dennis asks. I know he had his cell on him today. I can't, I say, cursing myself. I used up my battery trying to call you earlier. It's then that I notice something that makes me stop. A ten foot wide hole in the ground. But there's no stray piles of removed dirt or rocks. It's clean, smoothly dug, cutting into the earth. Wide, but only a few feet deep. It looks unnatural, like the ground was just deleted. No shovels or diggers used. Dennis walks over to it. This looks like the same kind of hole where I saw that light come from the ground, he muses to himself. I say nothing. My mind is spinning, but I don't know what to think. We need to get out of here, Dennis mutters. At that moment, the ringing noise carries through the forest again, sending a shiver down my spine. Dennis is right. There's something strange going on, and we might not be safe here. But that ringing sound could be a clue to where the rest of the crew went. Should I say no, let's check out the sound, or agree, let's get out of here? Well, in this situation, we already know Tony's dead. Uh, I found Dennis alive. If anybody else is alive, they're just going to have to, you know, we can't play hero here. The uh, last thing I want to do is kill me and Dennis trying to, you know, look for them. We need to get the hell out of here and get help to come back and figure out what happened. You know, I don't know. But I just think we need to go. I mean, you're getting weird feelings, get, sending shivers down my spine. That's not a good sign. We don't know what the hell happened. I'm going to say let's, let's go while we're ahead. Let's go while we're alive. So that's a notable uh, choice. You decided to avoid the sound. With that, we turn and start walking to the west in the direction that I'm pretty certain leads to the road. Continue. Wow. Walking through the forest. That's cool. I do like the pictures. They do add a, a lot to it. It's sort of embarrassing. I've been a logger for nearly 15 years, but I'm finding it easy to get lost in these woods. The trees are so thick in places that the moonlight doesn't even reach the ground. It's easy to get turned around. My only hope is that I can find the overgreen dirt road that will lead us back to the highway. You sure we're headed the right way? Dennis asks. Pretty sure, I say. I turn to him and see that he's clearly in pain. It's at this moment that we come upon another one of those smooth holes. This one is even stranger because a nearby tree also has a chunk cut out of it. The arc goes smoothly through the ground and then up through the trunk, like a cartoon wrecking ball blasted through the both of them. What the hell are these things? Dennis whispers to himself. He takes a step down into the hole, his boots creating imperfections in the shape like footprints on a sand dune. Step down into it with him? No, I think I'm going to play it safe and walk around the perimeter. Don't trust a perfectly... Yeah, that sounds weird. I walk along the edge, each step sending pebbles down into the hole and ruining its perfect shape. I'm amazed at how smooth it is. Even rocks that were under the earth have been sheared to fit the spherical shape. But as I'm noticing this, I notice Dennis's feet start to sag. Dennis, get out! I start, but I don't finish. Before he can react, the ground is giving way and he's falling. Oh wow! I try to step back, but the fissure that opens up disintegrates the ground beneath my feet as well. I cry out in surprise and can barely hear Dennis letting out a curse as we go down into the earth. Wow, this is pretty dramatic. 
This is what the heck? I have no idea what's going on here. It's got to be something unnatural or supernatural or something. Aliens? I have no idea. This is weird. Who knows? The fall isn't a long one, but when I hit something a few seconds later, it hurts like hell. The wind goes rushing out of me when I hit, and a sharp pain flies through me. What the hell? I say once my breath is back. Beside me, Dennis is slowly rolling over to get to his feet. I look up and see the hole in the ground where we fell through. It looks to be about 10 feet over our heads. It's completely dark, but there's a small flicker of light further into the cave ahead of us and a solid wall of rock behind us. Looks like the only ways out are further down into the cave or up through the way we fell in. Dennis might be able to boost me up there, but with his injury, I'm not sure how stable he is. He might drop me, yeah, and might hurt him worse too. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna try to climb out. I think we're gonna head to the light in the cave and see what's up. I'm curious as well anyway. I decide we'd better not risk hurting ourselves trying to climb out. As we turn to head into the cave, I take a closer look at the light further ahead and realize it's artificial. We both start heading towards it instinctively. As we step into the light, panic gently gnaws at me because what I'm seeing makes absolutely no sense. It's no longer a cave or a hole. It's a long, sparsely lit corridor. Wow, this is just getting weirder and weirder. What the hell? Why would that be out there in the middle of a forest? That's weird. It's a massive corridor. In fact, it seems to go on forever. This corridor is mostly dark, with emergency lights every 10 feet or so. I turn to my left and see that there's a door which appears to lead upwards to the outside, but it's locked tight. I push as hard as I can, but no luck. Dennis, help me out with this, I say. He comes over, and we both try to kick the door open, but it doesn't budge. For some reason, someone doesn't want people getting out of here. Looks like we're headed down the hallway. Tiptoe quietly or walk quickly? Uh, let's go quietly. I feel like a ghost, like I truly have no business being here. Dennis leans on me for support. We move slowly, our feet not making a sound. If anyone is in here, I want to make sure they don't hear us. Well, I don't think he could walk quickly anyway, so. We tiptoe forward as softly as we can. As I carry Dennis to the far end of this otherwise featureless place, I see a flight of concrete stairs leading down. I have to set Dennis down on the floor. His weight is killing me. Dennis, are you okay? Stop worrying, man, he says. I'll be okay. I just need a minute to rest. But looking at him, I'm not so sure. I can still hear the ringing noise every so often coming from somewhere in here. I look at the concrete stairs, pointing towards them so that Dennis sees them. Can you make it down those stairs, I ask? He stands up slowly and is visibly making an effort to not fall back down. Yeah, he says, and sounds a little irritated. He starts for the stairs without me, and I have no choice but to follow. We approach the stairs, and by just looking at them, I get the sense that we're crossing some sort of line here. There may very well be no going back. Wow. Okay. Damn stairs. That'd be hard to walk on if you were really injured. I mean, like Dennis sounds like he is. As I head down the stairs, I notice that they look aged. That damn ringing noise is somewhere below, louder than ever. I feel like I'm walking down into a cellar of a haunted house, the light becoming scarce as the stairs take a slight turn. I can feel the temperature drop. Dennis makes it a few steps down before he is leaning on the wall. He's breathing like he just finished a marathon. Pause to give him a break or keep up the pace? No, I mean, we gotta, 
we got to help him out or give him a break or whatever. Let's take a break, I say, putting my hand towards his shoulder to help steady him. Dennis lets out a sigh. Thanks. I don't feel too great, boss. As we both squat down on the stair, my mind seems to lock in on the unknown fate of the rest of my crew. Frank is married, and I've met his wife a few times. A nice woman with a huge laugh. My heart sags a bit when I realize I might never again get to hear him belting out classic rock tunes during lunch break. And Joe, well I don't know too much about him. He's 22 years old and is considering a community college. His folks are deadbeats, so he has been providing for himself since the age of 16 or so. Maybe I can find them and still get to hear Frank singing in his deep baritone voice after a few too many drinks. After a few moments, Dennis says, All right, let's keep going. We both stand up, leaning on each other. I have to make Dennis stay behind me as I stick my foot out in search of the next step. I can't help feeling like a child as a very powerful fear seizes me. I'm expecting a monster to reach out of the darkness and slicing into my throat. That's kind of scary. After what feels like forever, we come to the bottom of the stairs. We're closer to that ringing noise now. A door sits securely in the wall and looks just as out of place down here as I feel. A sliver of light seeps through, illuminating the area. The door has what looks like a panel with lots of labels and lights. Small embossed print above the panel says, Level 1 Entrance Gate, Transport Sector. And there's a button with no label. That's pretty bizarre. Transport Sector? <laughs> Inspect the panel. I'm not just going to push a button yet until I read everything. The panel looks like a diagnostic or alert system of some kind. Each label meant to communicate some status. Lockdown engaged, experiment in progress, shutdown engaged. Those all appear to be off. But one of the phrases has a slowly blinking red light next to it. The only powered light on this whole thing. Abnormal entity breach. What the hell? I slowly push the door open when Dennis suddenly steps in front of me, taking the lead. Let's go, he says. I want to find out what the hell this place is. As Dennis walks through, that ringing or beeping or whatever it is gets a little louder. The door closes behind us with a click. I can't help but notice the wobble in Dennis' step as he lets out a grunt. You sure you're healthy enough to keep going, I ask? It doesn't matter. I don't want to be in the woods right now. He seems scared. Something I've never seen before. Angry, yes. Upset, yes. But Dennis, Dennis is never scared. Uh, what do you see or what's so dangerous? I'm going to ask him, what did he see? What did you see, dude? What's making you so scared now? I don't know what it was, boss, but it was like someone had left a radio on, crackling, but we don't have any radios at the site. It was, I don't know, it was like something in the forest was moving. I give him a doubtful look, and he casts his eyes to the ground, frustrated. I know how it sounds, he says, but I also know what I felt. It was like walking into a funeral parlor, feeling death and gloom everywhere. I've been so preoccupied with my own fear that I nearly forgot about the ringing noise. It had become just background noise. We take a few more steps, and I can now see where we are. It makes no sense. Yet another thing that simply seems out of place. The shapes and muted colors of metal are easy to identify. But it just doesn't belong here. That's the end of chapter one. What the hell is he seeing that's making him understand where they are and the shapes of and muted colors of metal? They in a, is it a train? That's what I'm thinking, a train? They're down, down in a, I don't know. That's my guess is a train that he's seeing, but I have no idea. 
Yeah, I mean, why would a train be out there in the middle of a forest? But it kind of makes sense with the stairs and the corridors and everything. But I guess we'll find out. Uh, if you guys want me to continue this playthrough of this uh, game Buried, a virtual novel, virtual interactive story uh, called Buried, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, you know, if you if this video has helped you, you know, make you make a decision that you want to play it yourself, and this uh, video makes you decide, you know what, I'm going to go buy this. You click the link below and go buy it. Please leave me a comment first. Let me know that uh, this video persuaded you to actually go buy the game. I'd love to know that. I'd love to know what you know anything. Whatever you think about this game, please comment it down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, I certainly read every comment on every video, even though I have over 1,000 videos now. Uh, I still certainly read every comment I get. I reply to some of them, not all of them, but I definitely read every one. Uh, also, be sure you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Give me that thumbs up. helps me out more than you know. It just takes a couple of seconds to do that, people. So if you can just give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, I would certainly appreciate that. Also, as well, if you want to get all my indie reviews for all the games that I do and, and review on launch day just like this one, make sure you subscribe to me if you're not already subscribed. Uh, that way you get notification of every video I do. I do want to go ahead and thank you guys for watching. This has been Zaxter99. Be sure you leave those comments down below. Be sure you uh, take care of yourself. Make sure you take care of somebody you love. Make sure you give them a hug. Never know when our last day might be here. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. This has been Zaxter99.